Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Ask Julie Anything episode. I'm joined here tonight with Dr. Jean Hovey. Hi, Dr. Jean, how are you? Hi, I'm good, how are Thanks you? For, I'm good, thanks for joining us. Julie and Lee, as always, is here with us too. Hey, Julie. Hi. So tonight, oh, let me know if you guys can hear me in the chat, that'd be great. We haven't had any problems yet, so I think everyone can hear us loud and clear. Um, a couple housekeeping items. If you have questions, please submit them via the Q&A area. Hey, Darcy, that's great. Um, and I'll moderate them, ask Dr. Jean, ask Julie. Um, tonight is super special because we're talking all about cats. We're taking your questions. We're gonna be here live taking them. Uh, we can get a few of you on the mic if you'd like. And it's just a special episode totally committed to cats, cat lovers, and everything feline friendly. So super excited for tonight. Um, Dr. Hovey, would you, would you mind telling us a little bit about how you got started, Little Big Cat? I'll be happy to drop the website in the chat for everyone. Oh, sure. Well, I had many careers and at, in my 30s, I finally decided to do what I always wanted to do since I was little, which was go to vet school. So I did that and I was a veterinarian in Denver for a number of years. And then <clears throat> I moved to California and worked in a, for an animal rights organization. And then I moved back and was in practice for a while. But um, when I moved back, all I heard from everybody I know was, you have to meet Jackson Galaxy. You would just love him. And apparently for six months, all he heard was, you have to meet Dr. Hovey, you would love her. And we finally met at a friend's house. And, um, and it was, uh, and I don't know why I said this even, but I looked at him, I said, great, we have a lot of work we got to do together. And it just, it was totally cosmic. It was totally cosmic. And, uh, and we formed Little Big Cat and um and launched online and the rest is kind of history we started doing uh just consulting and i was writing articles and we didn't really have an idea how we were going to make money or anything but um it things came along i mean just the the right doors open and everything we just looked into it and uh you know and of course Jackson's totally committed to cats and I'm totally committed to cats and I've been anti-declawing forever and you know since the night before we had to learn the surgery in veterinary school um, they showed you had to go see the film of this surgery you're going to go do and it was so barbaric and nauseating I had to run to the ladies room and throw up it was just awful I couldn't imagine uh, why we would do that to cats so you know that was kind of my advocacy career was born there and uh, I got into holistic medicine in my junior year of vet school and it totally ruined me and here I am <laughs> <laughs> so advocacy and holistic medicine that's cool yeah that's a nice combination yeah you know but it makes me very not shy about saying you know this is how it is so yeah, for sure so for well let's sure. tell everybody don't be insulted if i get all over you but that's you know i'm going to tell you the truth yeah and and we appreciate yeah. sorry Joe. no go ahead i was going to say and we appreciate the truth especially in this group dr hovey and i also want to add that you're one of the trailblazers in the industry we were talking off camera before the session and you mentioned that you went to your first holistic conference in 1993 and you've been advocating and and you've been really pushing for you know more natural methods of pet care and cats especially for a long long time yeah since since 1993 as i learned about homeopathy i learned about nutrition i learned about vaccination saw dr pitcairn speak at that conference um met dr michael fox and we've been friends now for all those years and you know it's <clears throat> it was extraordinary that you know just the way the universe just said here's here's where you're going have a good time so that's what we do 
Yeah, and I, 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 when I was listening to you talk, and and I've even I've watched a lot of your stuff, I just feel it so important because I think with me, when I say being an advocate and holistic, I can't. To me, I can't see the separation because holistic medicine is all about the whole and if you're not advocating for the emotional the emotional side of an animal's life like you know I'm a homeopath for sure like I've always said I think it's an obstacle to cure I think there's there's a lot to be said about you know suppression and an animal especially cats not being able to fulfill their 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 species oriented lifestyle right so you know when when as homeopaths we look at obstacles to cure being you know maybe diet and um over vaccination and vaccinations and all that stuff but i i really i really feel like it's important for people to um support the way an animal is supposed to be living and not not how we think that they're supposed to be living. Right. And it was just a wonderful, fortuitous thing that the first thing I learned about was homeopathy from Dr. Christina Chambro. And, um, you know, so I got, I got it with both barrels between the eyes day one of her seminar. And, uh, you know, it really, you know, I had always kind of had a bent towards holistic. I was interested in herbs and, and stuff. I'd never heard of homeopathy, but, uh, you know, then when I graduated, I got a, a job in a vet clinic and she, and she had taken Richard's course and I took Richard's course immediately. And, you know, it's, uh, you know, and I don't know how vets can not be advocates for animals. I mean, we have to be, who else is going to do it? We're the ones who understand more about the physiology, the psychology, the emotionality, we're the ones that are supposed to tell people, well, really for your cat's well-being, you really should consider, you know, a catio or Perry um, walks on a leash when he, you know, if we're in, in a place where that is amenable. Uh, up here, he goes out in the yard and he's, he stays in the yard, but he's a fierce hunter and you can ask the dead vole I pulled out from under the bed this morning, about that uh, <laughs> but uh you know he's he's a master he was a street cat and uh you know but you you have to do it in a smart way the cats can be trained to stay in the yard but if you know if if you have a situation where your your yard isn't safe or mm -hmm. you know you but you can build a fence or you can build some kind of netting or something to keep predators out to keep the cats in but you know he is a champion about walking on a leash he's really 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 good he's he's the mellowest guy in the whole world he you, I, you know in the winter I put a turtleneck sweater on him he's like oh okay you know <laughs> when we moved up here we didn't have a we didn't have heat in this house so oh, wow. yeah so we were it, yeah we all bundled up you'd have to <laughs> For sure. Yeah. So Stephanie, see, we already have some questions. Do you want oh, to? Yeah, I'd love to. The first one's from Noor and um, all the way from Paris. It's 1 a.m. there. So oh my goodness. Noor, I'm going to try and give you the uh, permission to. Oh, sorry. Noor, I'm going to give you permission to chat. Oh, hello. Thanks. Hey, hi. Welcome. Hi. Thanks a lot. Um, yeah, I I would like to to ask uh, a question about um, gingivitis. Uh. Um, because my my dad's uh, kitty, she has some mild uh, gingivitis, so I have treated her with um, essential oils, but also homeopathy and. So uh, I would like your your advice um, on well, that. How, how old is the cat? Um, she's six. Okay, and what is her diet? Um, she's on the human grade wet food. Okay. 
and she um, uh, yeah she just had a, a, a dental cl um, cleaning Okay. So and I, she's not in pain. It's not. Um, it's not too much. So um, I I really want to to treat her. You know, uh, for the gingivitis, but also in prevention. Yeah. So I started with um, because she has a homeopathic um, vet in Paris, okay. and so she gave her uh, some mer mercurius uh, solubilis. Perfect. And so she's on it, and I'm also using um, essential oils from Animorials from uh, Dr. Shelton. How are you using those? Um, so she has topical, um, a topical blend um, called Kitty Boost. It's already uh, diluted in coconut oil. And also she's having uh, something in her wet food uh, with anti-inflammatory oils, um, and so she's um, it's in her wet food every day, and okay. so I, I gave her some arnica as well, uh, and um, colloidal silver as well um, for as a antibiotics uh, after the dental actually. Well, I'm glad I'm glad you said that the way you said that because. Colloidal silver is an antibiotic. Period. Yeah, I know. And yeah, therefore, yeah. that's a suppressive treatment. So that is that is going to counteract some of the homeopathy. And also, oh. I wouldn't give more than one homeopathic remedy at a time. Julie, I'm sure you know that too. And um, but you know, in Europe, they do homeopathy way different from what we do it here. You know, and I was trained by Dr. Pickern, who's a classical homeopath. But I wouldn't. You know, if she's not in pain, I mean, why, why the arnica? I mean, mercury is a really good constitutional remedy for that problem, as long mm -hmm. as it fits the rest of the cat. Um, I am not a big fan of essential oils for cats, and particularly not topical. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and I am really not a fan of um, coconut oil, and we can talk about that, but I'm already... Okay. I have already uh, well, made many, I... many enemies online for that, but... Um, I trust, uh, so th this is this particular brand, Animalio, and it's from Dr. Melissa Shelton. So it, it has been formulated and created by her, and she's a vet. Yeah. So I had very we all have different. We all have different philosophies of healing. And, yeah. you know, if I were to see this cat for the first time, I would probably just do one thing at a time so I know what's having what kind of effect. It sounds yeah, like you're she's right. on a, a decent diet. I, is it canned though or is it raw? Um, no, so my cat is on raw food, but uh, her, she's on wet food, but it's the best quality of wet but food it, that I But it's can, is canned food? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's <laughs> low temperature, it's uh, steamed human grade meat. Crap yeah, fruit. it's still it's still heat processed, and you can't get away from that. Um, I know, but it's the but best. I, put, I mean, it's it's low right. temperature steam, so it's well, I, I steam, water steams at two hundred twelve degrees. I don't care where yeah. you are on this planet, except right here when it steams at one ninety five because we're up high. Um, okay, but you know, in Paris, I guarantee you, <laughs> water boils at two hundred twelve degrees Fahrenheit. So it's steam is steam. I understand what they're saying, and it's probably a fine food, but you want to add things like digestive enzymes and probiotics uh, anytime you have any kind of processing going on. Um, mm -hmm. But she's on, on probiotics sometimes, you know, like a cure, radiating not all year long, but um, yeah. she's I, re having I, I recommend. Um, probiotics and digestive enzymes with every meal every time okay okay got uh, it because that helps them absorb the food better digest the food better um okay. with the topical what what i would probably have gone with would be to use some kind of those little soft finger toothbrushes you put over the end of your finger mm -hmm. um, or a piece of gauze 
and more massage the gums with it, not just kind of apply it because what you want is to stimulate that tissue. You want to stimulate an immune reaction. Yeah, I know. Well, that that's we. I would love to do that, but you know, cats. <laughs> she's right. A, and I, you know, if she's Perry, very, she's she's a very shy kitty, so yeah, it's a bit complicated. And she's not my kitty. She, she, right. You know, I'm not living with my parents, so that's difficult. I wish I could do that, but um, I'm yeah. not sure it's possible actually. Right. But I, you know, we're talking to a lot of people here, so we might as well kind of cover all the bases for other similar. Mm -mm situations but I you know I think you're on a good track I would probably still have her teeth professionally cleaned um, at least once a year just because okay, okay. once a year okay yeah yeah Pro for most cats unless her gingivitis is pretty severe in which case you know you'd want to you'd be going down a she, different she just path. had um, a dental cleaning professionally right. so, so if anything they, they can do you know if they can touch you know, and just rub and stimulate. You know, most cats love to be rubbed right there, you know. Okay, so and no, so, not by opening the mouth, but just... You well, know, if I would start outside? with that, I would start with just kind of chucking them on the chin. And then, you know, maybe you can slip a finger under there. And, you know, if, if you have one of those little toothbrushes or something or gauze or something, you know, but honestly... 99.99% .99 of people are not ever going to do that. So I'm realistic about that, you know, mm -hmm. but you're doing all the other things good. Now I have a friend who is the uh, top feline dentist in Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, I think he's also the richest <laughs> veterinarian in Colorado because dentistry is very expensive here, but he recommends feline greenies. And I don't know if you have them over there. And he said, <clears throat> it is the only, dental treat that actually will take tartar off the teeth oh, okay i know it uh, i can i can yeah. order the it from, from the are not great. the ingredients are not great but it does work to keep the tartar down and you know oh. dog greenies don't work like that nothing else works like that those tartar control treats you see in the store they don't work but feline greenies do and I tried, them with, know. I tried it with one of my cats and it did. After a couple of weeks, the tartar had all chipped off. Yeah, I didn't like the, the ingredients, so that's why I didn't bought it, but right, I didn't but buy it. it but. but then you're looking at, do you want to give a couple of chunks of, you know, kind of cookies and prevent, you know, a thousand dollar painful dentistry down the road? Well, you know, you got to balance right. that. And so, so about homeopathy is um mercury solubilis is, is a good one or do you advise it's very something? it's a very famous one for that and i wouldn't presume to prescribe it because i haven't taken the case but mm -hmm. it's it's a remedy that makes perfect sense it's often you okay. i have used that remedy for that problem many times so yeah would you would, would your father give any kind of bones uh why not? But I, I'm not sure. So she's called Bella. I, I'm not sure Bella would um, eat the bones, actually. Uh, here's, the, she, here's a trick that might work for you. Um, mm -hmm. If they can get like chicken necks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you take a hammer and you smash the bones inside the flesh. Then you cut it up in little chunks and give her one of those chunks a couple times a week. Mm -hmm. um, okay in dogs even once a week has been proven to be I tried better. that with my kitty because he's on the raw food uh -huh. but I didn't smash it you know I just gave you know some pieces of um, um, duck neck but yeah. he, he didn't want to yeah I usually recommend I recommend to break the bones until oh, that's the, a good idea actually yeah okay. their, at least until their system is used to handling that because, you know, animals that have been on processed food, that have never, you know, chewed on a mouse, they might need to, um, you know, their gastric juices and their tummy bacteria and all that stuff has to get kind of geared up in order to digest bones. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, in the raw food, um, one, one of the kind, there are some duck neck in it, and I guess it's smudged. And so he, he eats that. So, yeah. yeah. 
I, I if, can fry if, with her. Yeah. If, yeah, you know, and cut it in little, you know, inch chunks or something and let her gnaw on them and see, see if that helps. Maybe, can, I, can I try to mix it with the wet food or? I would give it separately. It's sort of dessert. Okay. Well, I'll try. She has never tasted raw food, so we'll see. Well, you know what? Take take the your you know cut up your chicken neck, and uh, put take a sieve or a strainer, dump it in uh, boiling water for thirty mm -hmm. seconds, pull it out. You've killed all the surface bacteria and also made it more palatable for the cat. Yeah, I find that works too. That if you're if you just almost like flash cook it for yeah. just. A few exactly. seconds, because then it makes it smell too like chicken. Exactly. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. But the what when, uh, Dr. Hobie said about the um, probiotics, that's really important, because if if the cat doesn't have proper gut bacteria, it's not going to have proper oral bacteria either. So, well, I do have your products, um, the love bug and the other one as well with the um, digestive enzymes, so I can give it to her. Yeah, the, the healthy gut with the one with the gingivitis, the health, you have healthy gut? Yeah, I have yeah. it. So it's got, it's got digestive enzymes and yeah. probiotics in it. So that would, I would do, I would for sure do that. Dr. Hovey, do you recommend for cats with gingivitis ever CoQ10? Or anything like that? Yes. I, uh, you know, cats are such individuals. And just when I think I have found the combination that works perfectly, it only works in one cat. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> things that I suggest, CoQ10 is one, lactoferrin is one. Lactoferrin mm -hmm. is a derivative of colostrum. And if you can't get that, just use colostrum. But um, Okay. I'm using ubiquinol for my cat perfect. Uh, every day. Exactly right. Yeah. I would do that with your other cat if it will eat it. Yeah, um, you usually, yeah. Poke a capsule, just put a drop mm -hmm. uh, or get the- Yeah, their... exactly. It's just a little bit uh, every day that I put in, in my cat's raw food. So, yeah. and you know, it's, it's taste less, odor less, so yeah. it works well. Great. So Great. Should, oh, I, should I stop the colloidal silver then with the- because you're not you're not doing anything to help the cat with that. You're destroying oh. the gut bacteria with every dose. Yeah. Even if it's natural? It is an antibiotic, period. Okay, okay. That's what okay. it is. But yeah. It's it was just after the dental, you know, because the vet that's, wants Yeah. To While it's it. healing up, that's fine, but she doesn't need it. And I and you're you're putting a roadblock in the in the way of all the other things you're doing. Oh, okay, good to know. Okay, I'll do that. Okay. Thanks thank so much. you. Thanks for your time and thank you so much. Good. I hope that was helpful for people. Absolutely. Um, there's one, there's a piggyback question here from uh, Sarah. She is hoping that the doc could talk about gingivitis where there is no tartar like, like autoimmune related. Would you recommend some the, the cats on raw probiotic enzymes, teeth brushing, tissue salts, everything like that's being done, as well as homeopathic nitric acid? Okay. Yeah, and that's a fair enough remedy for, that's a pretty good cat remedy. Um, these guys that have the really severe autoimmune gingivitis that stinks horrible and they're so painful, full mouth extraction is the definitive treatment. And my vet dentist buddy said, hey, cats don't need their teeth. And in fact, one of my cats had that problem. Um, and he was only six months old. And I pulled 16 teeth. It took me 10 minutes. It was like pulling them out of butter. His gums were so severely infected and mushy it had destroyed the bone that is vicious vicious stuff and he never looked back he would I, you know I fed him chunks of raw steak and he would just gum it to death he didn't you know and if he bit you you knew it you know they, they develop when that bone heals it develops a pretty sharp ridge and they do just fine without their teeth and usually you know you can usually leave the front teeth 
but you know, in some cases you have to take them all. And that is the only treatment that works and you can throw everything in the book at them. And as long as there's a tooth in there to provide a nidus or a focus for that infection, it's gonna stay. It's viral, it's autoimmune, it's miserable. And I don't know anything that works other than pulling the teeth. Yeah. I guess that's sometimes what, what needs to be done. Julie, do you have anything well, to add? If you know, if you've got a really severe problem, you do what you gotta do because it's very painful. It is very painful. painful. I've seen I've seen the same thing. I have seen them take them out. We've I had um I worked on a couple of cats at the clinic and I remember two of them specifically, they were siblings mm. and they both had it. And I, I see Andrea's on there too. And Andrea was working at the clinic at the same time. And I remember that, like, even though their teeth were pure white, their breath was enough to like knock oh, you out. It's like a graveyard. It's yeah, it was incredible. It was just unbelievable. And I think we tried for a year and we did everything we possibly could. And then we sent it to a... Um, a dental specialist and they did the extractions on on both cats now that doesn't work 100 percent of the time but it works 80 percent of the time it, it worked on both those cats but i think the big thing was and sarah you're you mean you're already doing it these cats had come to see me they were on dry food they were getting vaccinated every every year we changed that entire thing so at least when they went for the extractions they weren't they didn't have all that other stuff on or debilitated by all that other stuff on yeah that, on that as well yeah. yeah yeah i know it's just it's a it's it sounds a, way worse than it is and the cat will thank you for it i have pulled thousands of teeth out of rotten rotten mouths not necessarily just for that but just rotten decayed teeth and i have people call me a week or two weeks later and say oh my god she's a kitten again or He's running around like a maniac. And these cats were so painful. And these are old cats, some of them. They've mm -hmm. been living with dental disease for years. Boy, if you can do one thing for your cat, take care of their teeth. Man, mm -hmm. it's so important. And it's, it's such a hidden thing, but they can have the foulest mouths. And it, all of that is painful. And it really affects their quality of life, something terrible. So always be sure your vet checks at you know at your annual exam you don't have to get them vaccinated stuff but you need an exam to check for exactly that sort of thing yeah perfect thank you both um bonnie's got a question here about helping a cur cat relax let's see bonnie there you go that should work it looks like your mic might be muted there you go hey bonnie. okay can you hear me yeah okay um, I have uh, four feral cats, one of which is the mother that I just took in about six weeks ago. Um, so I'm giving her, uh, well, for three weeks, she was in a large dog crate, and inside of that, there was a cat carrier and a small litter box. Um, then she went to the vet, and she got a clean bill of health, which I was surprised about because she's been on the street for probably eight years. Wow. Yeah, I was really shocked. Um, anyway, so now she's loose in the house and she's chosen to stay upstairs under a bed, but she does appear to come downstairs for about 10 minutes, you know, when I'm asleep. I've got a trail cam to keep an eye on her. Oh, well, that's very um, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't imagine that I'll really ever be able to pet her, uh, but I'm giving her the Feel Away plug-in, the Feel Away spray, um, Jackson Galaxy's Scaredy Cat, and Feral Flower. Perfect. And um, she, you know, after I thought about it, it made sense. She took to Raw instantly. <laughs> Mm -hmm. um, she was used to it no right doubt. she was that's what she was eating outside except i'm not giving her mice but she's she's eating and she's using the litter box so i'm very happy so yeah. i just want to know if there's anything else i could do to 
help her relax? <laughs> yeah, play therapy. Okay. Okay, Jackson and I talk a lot about play therapy. Right. So it's got you on one end and the, the toy dangling on the other end. And then, you know, you may, and, and let me say first, you haven't had her very long. No. Um, we were talking before we um, started the, the conference call that, uh, you know, I had cats that mostly lived under a bed for 10 years or in a closet. And she had, she's had cats that did that. And, you know, time, just time and uh, sticking to a routine, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just making it as stable of an environment as possible is going to be your first thing. <clears throat> Then if you can, you know, if she gets used to you being near her or near enough to her, and you might start with a laser pointer even because it is, you can be farther away, but try and engage her hunting instincts. Okay. Because if a cat hunts in a territory, that territory is theirs. That, that instills great territorial confidence and it will really help her come out of her shell. Um, does she meow at you at all? Uh, no. Okay. Um, well, she may I be. She may be truly a... feral. If she's truly feral, you may not ever be able to touch her. But a lot of cats that seem really feral uh, aren't, you know, and they right. have human exposure in the past. And you may be able to bring her around to that at some point. I, I would count on it. But um, play therapy and the flower essences and possibly a constitutional homeopathic remedy if you can if you get to know her well enough that you can provide uh enough information to your homeopath um then i you might be able to get somewhere with that like for for a cat who's just really terrified you might think about aconite or some of some of these other remedies but um you know the constitutional homeopathy will work deeper than anything else but just if you can get her involved in, in claiming that territory as her happy hunting grounds, um, that's going to go a long way to making her comfortable. Okay. I want to ask, not, not, not necessarily for, for this kitty, but um, what's your opinion on um, CBD for cats? I like it. I haven't, I have studied it. I was using one for a while and I, and then I became unhappy with the company, but I think CBD works great. Um, you know, of course it has to be the zero THC because THC is very sure. toxic. Um, yeah. Not all that good for us either, frankly, but um, yeah. you know, it's, and it does have some emotional effects and some calming effects. Mostly it's going to be immune boosting, you know, but if she's healthier, she's going to feel better. And if you feel better, you know, you're more willing to try new things. So, you know, yeah. everything all works together. This is holistic medicine, right? Yeah. We do it all. <laughs> I do have a uh, CBD here because I took her, uh, her th litter of three in three years ago. And I used to give them a little CBD with no THC mm -hmm. and it did seem to calm them down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, but I was a little worried about the feel away and the essences and to put CBD on top of it if I'm, if it was just, you know, too much or. Well, how are you using the feel away? Um, well, the, there's the plug in, in the room that she's in. Okay. And then when I go in the room to clean the litter box, um, I give a couple sprays in the room. Um, I also, I have a back scratcher and I give her some treats with it and, oh, cool. and I pet her on the head with the back scratcher. Um, and when I first approach her with it, she hisses, but after like a few seconds, she stops. Perfect. You know what else is going to really help her? Tellington tea touch. Mm. Well, I can't touch, touch her. <laughs> you can touch her with the with the with back the scratcher. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I mean, you can t you can get an ostrich feather or a, or a what do you call them peacock. Right. You, know, you can get get a feather, any kind of a wand like that. And if you can just make the little Tellington circles on her head and around her mouth, 
and just start. And then, you know, if she presents any other body part to you, you can do that. Um, you know, you don't want to do it with your hands, of course, but if you're already able to touch her with the back scratcher, um, that's huge. So that mm -hmm. would be really, really helpful for her. Bonnie, Bonnie do you, does she sleep on anything particular or does she lie everywhere in her room? She sleeps on the carpet that's under the bed. Okay. Um, one time somebody told me, and, and it seemed to work, um, like the, the pheromone transference thing. So if you, if you were to put a, like a couple of towels down under the bed. Okay. And then if she sleeps on the towels, like try then to take one towel out. And then before you go in to see her, if you take the towel and rub the towel on yourself, um, they particularly, say, particularly hands, your hands. Your hands, because then you're transferring her, her scent onto you. So okay. it's more of a familiar, it's, it's more familiar and less, um, less uh, well, aggressive. Stressful, yeah. 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 Okay, I have a quick weird question, which everyone asks me, and I have no idea. Um, so she just came into the house and I've had three of her kittens, quote unquote kittens in here for two years already. And they're three years old now. There has been absolutely no conflict between them. Do you think they recognize each other? Or it's just been too long? That's a really good question. <laughs> and I think, I think we give animals short shrift, like, you know, if if you raised a puppy and then didn't see it for 10 years and then you see them, the dog's going to remember you, okay? They're right. not stupid, okay? <laughs> they really, I think they do recognize each other. I don't think that their reaction is necessarily perceivable by us because we're such okay. big oafs and we don't get it. Um, <laughs> but they, you know, they have their scent and their, you know, I mean... I'm sure they do, but once the cats are kittens are adults, they don't have the same social structure anymore. Mm -hmm. So you may not see them respond to each other, but you she knows they're hers. Oh yeah, I think you know. so too. She okay. Not, she not she's not dumb. <laughs> you don't talk, but she's not stupid. She's you know <laughs> these animals. I, they perceive and they know so much more than we give them credit for. Oh yeah, but I think. I I think they have to know, you know. I mean, remember Lassie come home? I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. You know, you I, I, that, what was that? Well, there was a thing around, that went around YouTube a couple of years ago about this, this, these guys that had raised a lion cub. Oh, yeah. And then the lion was turned loose in Africa, and 10 years later yeah. they went back, and she was overjoyed to see them. I mean, mm -hmm. they, you know, they because they see us and they see other beings not just what you're seeing on the camera here they're getting the whole picture they're getting the way it moves they're getting the psychic energy they're getting the smell emotional energy the sounds the smells the visuals i mean um you know mm -hmm. they they perceive a being that we have no idea is there yeah. so yeah i i guarantee they know each other but okay. I, I rest they, they aren't necessarily going to be like, oh, hey, I haven't seen you in a while. No, they're just going to, you know, they're just going to be who they are, and but they know. Yeah. Okay. I rescued a crow. I know this is not about cats, but I rescued a crow once in, in BC, in Vancouver, and um, it went and it was in a rehab center for almost a year, and when I, when it, it went, it went quite, quite far away, and when it was time to let it go, the they asked me to, to t would I take it back to where I found it. Mm -hmm. And um, we have an incredible bird vet in in Vancouver, and and said to me, I said, okay, I'm, I'm taking this crow back. I'm going to put it as close to where I found it as possible. And when I did, it it sort of just sat in this cat carrier for a bit and looked around, and then it jumped out. And then it jumped a little bit and then it flew up into a tree 
And all of these birds came, but they didn't land on the same branch as this, this crow. And yeah. then about 15 minutes later, four or five crows came and landed on the branch. And when they took off, they took off in the, I, I told her exactly how that when they started to fly, which ones flew when and whatever. And she, and her name is Anne McDonald. And she said that the crows that landed on the same branch as this crow would have been its immediate family. Like yeah. it's immediate family, like wow. their father, like their mother. Family. Yeah. Yeah. It was incredible. So yeah, I definitely believe your cat knows that it's its kittens. Oh yeah, their their perception is so far past us. We're we're pathetic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're welcome. So I'm gonna read this next question. It's it's pretty long. Have you ever heard of abnormal psychogenic eating behavior? I have two cats, they're twins, three years old, and they seem to have it. From day one at six months old, I've been bitten, scratched, jumped on. They search for food all the time. They've eaten through thick plastic, tried to eat tin cans, just anything. Every day something is broken, shredded, and destroyed. They've been raw fed all their life. Besides this issue, they are the sweetest, most cuddly, sweet kitties ever. They are healthy otherwise. Help! Wow. Well, one thing... I would suggest is cook the food because not all animals can eat raw food and it may be upsetting their tummies and their and the pica is a result of them trying to assuage some sort of discomfort um if, if you haven't tried a, a course of pepsid or one of the um you know tummy protector kind of um kind of drugs I would certainly think about that. Let's make sure it isn't pain because abdominal pain make them really crazy. So, um, you know, that's the first thing I would rule out. I mean, obviously you're going to need to work with a vet one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. to, to deal with it. It's not going to be an easy thing because now it's a major habit. Um, you know, and you know, I, now I'm going to, now I'm going to, say the rude thing which is if the cat's peeing on your shoes put your shoes away okay um don't leave anything where they can get it you know put away anything that's loose um you know put things up out of their reach get put doors on the cabinets whatever you know if you have a shelf put a plexiglass over it or something um you know minimize their access to uh to things like that and you know give them maybe some dog chew toys maybe you know um, some cats really just like to chew. Um, I had a cat who really loved to chew styrofoam. It was not, you know, the first time I saw styrofoam coming out the other end, I thought, what the heck kind of a worm did I bring home from the barn? But uh, it was styrofoam. She had just pooped out all the styrofoam. And, uh, you know, so they will eat weird stuff, but abdominal pain is one of the first things I would think of for that. So start there. And I had... Can you ask her if she, um, did she, what did she say if they both started eating as soon as she got them home? She said they're twins um, from day one at six months old. She's been bitten, scratched, jumped on. They search for food all the time. Like digestive enzymes too can, can sometimes help with that, you know, if it is just, if it is pica, but um, you know what I found the most interesting thing? I've had a few cases, and Don Hamilton and I actually talked about this and started researching it a little bit about how some cats react really weirdly if they get ketamine as a as a pre Oh, they neuter. Yes, my cats. I had a cat. Her and personality completely changed. They just like changed like a like they weren't even the same animal. Yeah. And I treated um two different cats, they weren't siblings, with um this exact issue. And it it started post spay and neuter. And I actually gave them ketamine, homeopathic ketamine, because we had tried constitutional, we had tried everything. And, and then Don and I were talking and, and we just tried it and it helped them 
exponentially. Like it really helped both of them. They were different, different clients and different, like I said, they weren't, they weren't siblings, but if this cat has had ketamine, these kittens have had ketamine when they were spayed and neutered. Um, it's, it's worth a try after you do everything else. Like you said, I would still be like, this cat would eat, these cats would eat like bras and, and, and doll arms and just. Yeah. Like, and the, and the aggression fits also because ketamine is related to PCP angel dust. Yeah. And yeah. it makes it, if, you know, I was a cop for a while and you do not want to see somebody on angel dust coming in. No. <laughs> No, 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 no. no I they have superhuman strength and they'll kill you just as soon as look at you. Yep. So, um, uh, that's a very uh, good point. I wouldn't have thought of that. So Yeah, so that would be something to get a hold of a homeopath. And once you've done everything that Dr. Hovey said and maybe tried some digestive enzymes, if there's not a big shift, I would look at maybe getting a homeopath to help you with trying to treat them for ketamine if they had it. Yeah, well, you know, anybody can, well, it's a controlled substance now, but you could probably, um, I would see if Natural Health Supply in Santa Fe, New Mexico might have a, um, a no-so for that. Mm -hmm. There's something to ask, maybe they could make you one. Yeah. I something. think Andrea, Andrea Ring, I think she's on here. She probably has it too, but yeah, it's very kind of night and day we both knew this cat this cat before he was neutered and right after it was like he was a different animal it was very strange mm -hmm. so what cured my cat was she had to have another surgery and she had ketamine again and she turned right back into the kitten she had been it was isn't that, crazy. It, isn't that interesting eh yeah totally it was flip flop it was bizarre I wonder if some dog aggression and stuff comes from that too. I mean, Don thinks it we don't, use, it, it, we don't use ketamine in dogs hardly ever. No, I know, but I think there are a couple, a couple um, of our uh, what you call it? It's um, uh, like not it wasn't SPCA's. They were different. They were a different group. Not like and, shelters. Shelters, and they were using it as a pre as a pre anesthetic for wow. or for like really scared dogs, like trap dogs and stuff. Oh God. So yeah. I know. Oh yeah. Make them psycho on top of being terrified. Great no. plan. Oh, it's terrible. Oh my God. Dr. Okay, Hobie, sorry, yeah. Sometimes I look at my profession and I think, I. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dr. Hovey, what was the, um, what was the Santa Fe that you mentioned, the company oh, Nat there? Natural Health Supply. Um, cats don't need to be outside. And if they they were born inside and they've never been outside, they look out a window and they think it's kitty TV and they don't know what they're missing. And I don't think they're missing anything. You have a cat like my cat who came from the streets or your cat streets um, that is completely unmanageable unless they get some outdoor time then you know you can you can work with a harness and leash you can you know create a um, an enclosure for them remember it has to have a roof because cats will jump and birds will fly down um, but I know Jackson and I are very very strong about keeping keeping cats indoors um, if, it, if it's at all possible there are psycho cats that you cannot but um, you know, most, most cats, I have had outside cats before I knew better and converted them to inside cats. I've done that with five different cats. They were all fine. They didn't care. They didn't ever rush the door. They were like, oh, I landed in hog heaven. I think I'll stay. You know, they were just fine about being converted. But you, you know, you have to give them the indoor enrichment. I you was going to say that you're, I think with what, like, if you if like what you and Jackson do is phenomenal because you it's almost like you replicate it them being outside yeah it, because if you, you do play therapy and you have the hunt catch kill eat the whole yeah, cycle all that stuff yeah and and vertical space and 
um, you know, you do all the things that you do to make the indoor environment satisfying for the cat, whether you have kitty, you know, those videos that you can play on the computer that have mice and birds. Um, my cat Spencer, his favorite TV show was Meerkat Manor. He really thought meerkats were cool and he wanted to eat one, but uh, he, he was fascinated by this. So, you know, some cats see TV and some cats don't really, but um, you know, you can, you can do your, but even if you're, you know, on the 20th floor of some high rise, you can make, um, you can make a habitat for them that's, that's going to fulfill them and they're gonna be happy cats. And let me say one other thing, because I, I know we're going into winter, and but kitten season will come around soon. Again, if you're going to get a kitten, get two. I don't, just get two. Okay, don't even, don't, don't ask me why. You will be happier. If you have an older cat, also get two kittens, because I got a singlet kitten, and he pestiferized my two older cats for the rest of their lives. He was a brat and a half. <clears throat> I think they lived longer because they had to get up in the morning and see what he was going to do. But um, they didn't really appreciate his affections, uh, you know. But but you, if you can have a companion, that makes a big difference. If you're right. trying to introduce two adult cats, that's a little trickier, and you may never uh, get the result you want. But um, you know, certainly you want to make indoors as good of a place as possible for them and not just, you know, willy nilly, well, you can't go outside. And then, and there's nowhere for them to be or do or anything. And you're gone and at work. Not, right? And you're not home all day and you're, yeah, you're not home all day. You're sleeping the rest of the time. You know, it's, it's not mm -hmm. a, that's not a life for a cat. So you, you want to, you want to make it real for them. Mm -hmm. What do you say, ladies? Do we have time for one more? Oh, sure. Yeah. I know I, I talk too much and then I don't have time to answer everybody's <laughs> questions. <laughs> Sherry's got a question. Sherry, um, I've got your question here. I'm going to give you the mic. If you want to chat with us, please feel free to ask your question. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Great. Um, I have a 17 year old cat with a cough mm. and he has had the cough for about a year. Um, initially he coughed up a worm and so I did have him uh, treated with a, you know, a medical pharmaceutical anti-parasite. Um, I'm a homeopath um, and have a lot of experience with um, uh, drainage, not, not the classical homeopath. Oh, okay. So with homotoxicology kind of? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I've been treating him for a while. I mean, the medication, I just did that because I just thought, okay, he's got so much in his lungs that he's coughed or not. Um, so the cough was gone, but we turned in two weeks and he continued to have the cough. The cool, cool test is negative. Um, so I've tried a variety, you know, over this last year, have tried a variety of different uh, anti-parasitic herbs, um, diatomaceous herbs, um, and, you know, just general drainage and like organ support. Um, so I'm, kind of, I mean, he's still coughing, and in the last couple of weeks, he is coughing more, like he's coughing daily now. He does cough more often at night. He does cough more often around the full moon. He really coughs, you know, um, around the blue moon that we just had. I so, think we all had to cough something out on that one. <laughs> yeah. So that was, that was a powerful moon. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you've got any suggestions for me. Well, until proven otherwise, um, Coughing cats are either hairballs or asthma. If he coughed up a worm, chances are that it came from the GI tract and not necessarily from the lungs, because okay. lung worm is uncommon. Although there have been cases in the last year, there have been a bunch of cases, but okay. I don't think they really look like worms when they come out. But I'm not sure about that because I never had to deal with that. Okay. I'm retired. I don't have to do that stuff. So. But um, but asthma 
and and it sounds if 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 it's getting worse and especially now that we're indoors more and the heat's coming on and stuff um that would make sense and it does sound like more like a wet cough now so yeah the other, the other thing that is rare in cats mm -hmm. but heart failure will also cause coughing mm -hmm. so i i think you pr probably a chest x-ray is in order okay just to make sure it's not something horrendous Right. No. And then once we know it's not horrendous, then we can deal with it with homeopathy and mm -hmm. and uh, antioxidants and all the other good nutrients that'll help his immune system. But um, you know, we want to make sure it's nothing catastrophic. That if we didn't find it, we would feel really dumb. Right. And then once you know that it's not his heart, um, I've found. Uh, N acetylglucosamine works incredible for cat asthma. Yeah, I have been giving him uh, like drainage remedies for the lung. Mm -hmm. And yeah. some of those remedies were remedies that he would use with asthma, you know, even just recently. But, um, so well, it, it, takes, it takes time. Do you, now, uh, yeah, with, with homotox, that's a, I love homotox. Um, Richard would kill me, but you know, I, I took that class too. So, yeah. um, but they, I don't know if you can, you may be able to get them in Canada because he'll pulled out of North, well, of the U S because yeah. I'm so litigious, but if you can get them in Canada and get the injectables and inject them into acupuncture points, there's, it's, um, yeah, there's. You know, since you're familiar with it, you you might want to do something like that because that's way way more powerful and, and deeper and home and um. I don't auto really auto sanguis would be really really good too. Which would be? Auto sanguis. You take a drop of their own blood, and you mix the remedy, and you give it back to them by mouth. And it's so whatever's in the blood, it's going to reflect back. It's going to be a remedy for whatever that is. It's a really amazing thing is to check it out it's really fun okay i would just that would be then a, a big matter of trying to find somebody to draw the blood and then inject the remedy well it would be a process yes <laughs> but since you're you know you're already halfway there with the drainage remedies but just you know for, for further contemplation right yeah thank you but even all the stuff that we talked about for ibd helps sometimes with asthma with cats like slippery elm marshmallow root um right. because it's autoimmune so it's yeah. autoimmune so you want to you want to settle the immune system yeah. yeah all of those are are helpful too yeah i always find it harder to work with my own cat always yeah because there's that emotional component yeah yeah and sometimes you don't see the forest for the trees you know yeah i've i've missed totally obvious stuff on my own cats that I feel like a complete moron when somebody else, you know, another vet points it out to me, like my best friend and says, uh, excuse me, but you know, yeah. so yeah. It, it is, it is hard it's, and it's valuable to have another uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. No, thank you very much. Sure. Awesome. All right. Um, I think, do you guys want to do one more and then wrap it up? Sure. Yeah. So, did Sorry, you? I was sure. That's okay. Uh, Tammy's asking, how can I stop bullying? Mm. Ooh. Ah, bully remedy, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, on Jackson Galaxy's website, um, Peacemaker. And ultimate peacemaker are our uh, flower essence remedies, and we have, um, you know, the peacemaker goes to everybody, and and bully is for the cat who bullies, and it is really interesting how well it works. So it's a it's a three remedy set, and I would ultimate peacemaker. You could try just peacemaker, and see if that doesn't kind of soothe things all around. But if if you need to take the next step then the ultimate peacemaker is is uh it's really killer i can't believe you know i can't believe that we figured that out all those years but it's worked well ever since for thousands and thousands of cats 
also play therapy. Get the bully tired. You know, wear them out. Give them something else to do. You know, because mostly it's boredom. Mm -hmm. Julie, do you have anything to add about a, a cat that's bullying? Oh, you're muted, Julie, I think. Muted now? There you go. Oh. Okay. Um, mostly what Jean said, like, I'm, I'm just wondering why it's bullying. You know, is it is it bored? Is it in pain? Is it stomach hurt? Is its teeth hurt? Does it, like, to make sure that all of those things have been checked out, right? To be sure that it's not doing it because it's it's hurting. And I I have heard that the those those essences that you guys have are amazing for, for that sort of stuff. I know two people that have used them and it's been it's been awesome. Yeah. And we were talking before the call about how people put up with behavior problems in cats until, you know, and they don't know that you can modify behavior in a cat and you sure can. And it's just as easy as dogs. Once you find out what the cat's personal reward system is, because they're not as, you know, they're not as food made, motivated usually as, as dogs. But, um, you know, that's why Jackson and I started little big cat because we saw this horrendous thing where people would, you know, have a cat with a behavior problem and they'd live with it and live with it and live with it. And then they'd say, I got to get rid of the cat. And the cat would end up in the shelter where Jackson worked and, um, you know, and, or euthanized. And, yeah. you know, you, don't give up on your cats, people. They're, you know, they're beautiful beings. They will teach you so much. And uh, you have to think like a cat in order to deal with, with a cat. But, you know, you have that capacity everybody does so you know don't think they're inscrutable and and cats are really cool and they basically want what everybody wants you know food shelter and to be loved so that satisfies pretty much all of us doesn't it, it does yeah that's that's really well said um and you're not wrong you know <laughs> it's it's something we don't think about all the time but it's no, we don't with cats. We just don't think about it. No, cats, cats, we don't get it. In my opinion, cats don't get nearly the attention that they, they should be getting in, in, in our industry in the vet industry and in the, in yeah, the, most vets are not cat people. No, very few are. So it's worth finding a practitioner that really loves cats, cats you know, yeah. <laughs> the, the old sci-fi novel, um, <laughs> of strange land. You you could grok something, which means you really you really get it on a very deep level. Yeah. And and you know, I I went to vet school with other vet students, and there's they're strange people. We are all a little weird, and uh, you know, and our motivations are different, but mostly. Um, Mostly they're dog people or horse people or, you know, something. But cats are, you know, they think they're so inscrutable and they learn enough about cats to get by, but they don't really get it. And it's worth finding a, a practitioner that has put in the time and, sure. uh, and, and really studied up on, on cat psychology because you got you to gotta really figure them out. But once you've lived with one for a while, they're not all that difficult, you know. Mm -hmm. No, no, you just have to look at them like cats. Yeah, yeah. And not like other other species. Yeah. You know, and I know I saw I saw a comment fly by at some point that says, how come I don't like coconut oil? Well, oh. Dog, <laughs> Dogs Naturally magazine just posted on one of my articles and, and, uh, and the editor has also posted a couple of articles and you can read it. It's, and I'm having a giant fight on Facebook. I'm like a pariah all of a sudden on Facebook because I have a problem with coconut oil, especially for cats. I, you know, it's, I, there's many reasons, but lauric acid can cause inflammatory processes in the gut and it's empty calories for them. They need 
omega-3s, they need the oils that they need. And if you're going to give them an oil that they don't need, that's calories that's going to substitute for nutrients that they really got to have. And so I just, I don't see any sense in doing it. It's also unpalatable to a lot of cats. And if you have a cat with a problem, the last thing you do is make them stop eating because they don't like something in the food. So um, lots of reasons, and you can gang up on me on Facebook. I could take it. <laughs> I, I think I think we have to, when it comes to that, I think it really is important to look at, um, again, species-oriented. You know, like what really would they be, mm-hmm. what really would they be eating, right? right. Like, and there are no native cats in the places where coconut palms grow. Really, I think the fishing cat, but obviously he doesn't. He eats fish, so um, you know this. It's not a natural. Food. It's a natural food for humans. I mean, I, I, I use it topically. Topically, it's fabulous. But I just, I, you know, giving it to carnivores, I, I have. I just have a kind of a mental block on that one. Yeah, I wish we could give more of the whole prey. Then, then we can. I think we wouldn't have to worry about any kind of oils. I don't think we'd have to worry about fish oil. I don't think we'd have to worry about any kind of oil. Oh, because then a prey animal eating a wild type diet has all those omega threes in them. Gets it from the plants, just like fish get it from the algae. Yeah, it's all it's all a beautiful system, and we have messed it up. Yeah, yeah. If we could just really bring that right back to truly the 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 whole prey. I don't think we'd have to worry about enzymes. I don't think we'd have to worry about oils. I don't think we'd have to worry about hardly anything. No, and they'd be, you know, they'd be chewing them. They'd be massaging the gums and yeah. the tartar off. They would have beautiful teeth. You know, probably have a few parasites, but we can deal with those. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and if, if anybody really needs voles, I'm sure Perry would be happy to get you a few because he's really, really good at that. It's, there's... There's a very large population of voles <laughs> in the woodpile, so he's he's got that going. Start his own. He can always start his own company. I know. <laughs> Perry, Perry's moles. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, it's a million dollar idea. Exactly. <laughs> this was a wonderful session this evening. Thank you so much, Dr. Hovey, for being oh, with you're us. So and welcome. It, it was awesome. I love that it's so free flowing. All our guests are so open. You're willing to, you know, be real, share your thoughts, and 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 we appreciate that. Yeah. So thank you again for hanging out with us, and well, thanks so to the attendees probably, as well. I probably would be sorry that I say this, but if you want to send me the questions um, that are left over, I'll try and answer them in email or something. Oh, well, that's awesome. You, yeah, okay. absolutely. Everyone would totally appreciate that. That's that's above and beyond. So thank you so much. Well, I, you know. I don't even know what I'm talking about until somebody asks me a question and then it's like, yeah. <gasps> then I got, I have so many ideas. So, yeah. I, you know, it's fun for me to kind of delve into those things because I am retired and I don't have my hands in it anymore. And so it's, it's a lot of fun for me. Awesome. Glad to hear that. Thank you to our attendees for hanging out. We appreciate all of you guys and we're grateful that everyone joined us tonight. Have a fabulous night and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Okay. Bye.